All right, we are back. It's no apologies. And I'm very happy to present to you our next guest, Justin Labar, District 2 Chairman. Welcome. Thank you for letting me be here. You're really scraping the bottom of the barrel these Not days. Yeah, at we, all. we went through like 17 or 18 <laughs> people. No, I, I was wondering if you guys would feel more comfortable if I was to put this on. Oh. Uh, was that something? Yeah, you... no. We're actually. I, I would right. feel maybe more comfortable. <laughs> It has nothing to do with COVID. The, the public at least wouldn't have to look at my face. Right. Oh, you're so funny. <laughs> so Justin is a district chairman for which area of the country? District 2, Northwest North Dakota. Okay, so Northwest North Dakota, God's country. Absolutely. Many, many amazing. I had a wonderful time when I was in his district. They were very, very kind and gracious to me in that area of the state. Loved it. Wonderful people. And, yeah, they are wonderful, wonderful people. And you had a lot of people get involved with your district, too. We'll get to that oh, in, in a while. But first, I want to talk just a little bit about you, what you do. Tell us about yourself. Sure. Well, I was born in Stanley, raised in a little town called White Earth, where I still live. Um, we did have a hiatus out to Montana that we'll probably talk a little bit about too. Mm -hmm. um, currently live in White Earth with my wife. We've been married for over 20 years. We have 10 kids. Five uh, girls and five boys. Five girls, five boys. Mm -hmm. And uh, teach fourth grade in Stanley, drive bus, and I have a side job in the oil field and even decided to try my hand at taxidermy recently. So. And how's that going for you? It's fun. It's a it's a huge learning curve, but I'm enjoying it. Did you start it as a just a hobby? Or? Yeah, more of a hobby and kind of a plan for the future too. You never know how long the oil field thing will stick around, so why not have sure. something in the back pocket you can rely on for yeah. a side job later Excellent. on in life. So So tell me about how you got your start in politics and how Ooh. you kind of started to get political. That really goes back to uh, our time in Montana. Uh, after my grandmother died, and I think it was 84, we moved out to Montana, and uh, my dad suddenly got interested in politics. Mm. And uh, there was really two things that he did out there that still stick with me today. One was they had a longtime state senator, I believe it was Senator Melcher. He actually was elected the year I was born, in 77, and was still serving at that time in the 88 election and they wanted him gone. He was a Democrat. And so dad got involved with a group that uh, helped to get him removed. And so uh, that was one thing that stuck in my mind. And, and the second one that's probably the biggest and most instrumental was something called the Constitutional Initiative 27, mm -hmm. CI 27, which was uh, an initiated measure mm -hmm. to abolish property tax. And uh, so they decided to work on this initiated measure, and you sent me some photos. Oh, yeah. They traveled around the state. And as you can see here, uh, they got a bus together and revamped the inside. Those are the petitions. That's my dad and his friend, Con Tatum from Texas, a good friend of ours. And they traveled the state collecting signatures to put this initiated measure on the ballot to abolish property taxes. What an innovative idea to do that in the bus. That's super cool. It was awesome. And so you were just a little successful. kid at this point? I was. So I went to all the rallies, uh, met what I still believe today is some of the greatest people that walked planet Earth who really loved America, loved the state of Montana. And, and uh, that's kind of where I cut my teeth on politics and then we came back to North Dakota after about four and a half years, um, licking our wounds. The Montana experience didn't work out quite as well as we had hoped, <laughs> and we're grateful to be back in North Dakota. Um, but that is some that issue, that issue of property tax, is one that's always stuck with me. Later on, as we came back to North Dakota, um, my dad got sick. My mom was supporting the family, and uh, we actually lost property because of failure to pay property mm. tax. Um, we just didn't have the money right. to, to pay the property tax. Well, and that owners. left a sour taste in my mouth that I still have today and uh, think and firmly believe, and I, nobody will change my mind, that the property tax should be eliminated. It's the most immoral tax that we have, in my opinion. It absolutely is. I agree. So. Property, property is the foundation of a free society. Absolutely. And it's not truly your property if you nope. must pay rent. Call it property tax. doesn't absolutely. matter what you rent. want to call it. The, the point is, if you don't pay the fee every year, they can take it from you. They How does that even work? They can take it from you, work? then do you really own it? What Absolutely. does ownership mean? Absolutely. Yeah. 
And it was disheartening. The other day I saw a post from Williams County, no offense to Williams County, um, with tax foreclosures. And just the, the idea of that and the way that it was posted and the tone in which I read it as somebody who's lost property, right. I thought, how can you do that and feel good about yourself, really honestly? And it's, it's really disheartening in a state like North Dakota where we're blessed with so many resources mm -hmm. and have billions of dollars of reserves. Right. I mean, what is it? We've increased spending 160% plus since 2009. This is a Republican legislature, no offense to the legislators, um, but it's a Republican legislature. We can do better than that. We should be able to, we, we, not should, we can abolish property tax, period. And this idea that, well, what are we gonna do? The sky's gonna fall, how are we gonna replace it? We've got billions of dollars of extra. We're spending two and a half billion dollars more than we did uh, over 10 years ago. You're telling me we can't find places to cut back, eliminate property taxes, and not raise anything else? I'd argue we can eliminate property taxes, and we can eliminate income taxes mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. But property taxes definitely needs to go. Mm -hmm. The idea that you will take somebody's property for failure to pay is just, it's wrong. And nobody, whether they own property or not, uh, I should say own property or not. Um, <laughs> right, right, in air quotes. <laughs> should should accept such a premise. There's, uh -huh. And I'm a school teacher. I, I don't lose a wink of sleep at night about the idea of eliminating property tax. The idea that we're not going to fund education if we eliminate property tax, give me a break. Yeah. Honestly, yeah, it is ludicrous. that's a cop out and a joke. Get to the legislature, get the moral fortitude, do the right thing and eliminate property tax. You heard it. I hope that works. I know. I'm like, that would be great. It, yeah, yeah. We've been... Stop making excuses. That's yeah. what I'd say. 100%. That's true. Well, technically, the, uh, if you read the Constitution, the way it's written, Absolutely. is property taxes aren't supposed to be going to pay no. for education anyway. It's interesting. When I was at Williston State, we had, in our North Dakota history class, there was a part where we learned that initially when the state was founded, the idea was that the state was supposed to fund education, mm -hmm. but that they, it, the word, if I'm not mistaken, in that history book, that North Dakota history book, is that they shirked the responsibility and then it went to the local governments. Yep. Wow, so we get into word. we get into this finger pointing situation. I'm on the city council in White Earth too, which is just small, but we eliminated our city portion of property taxes in White Earth. If I don't know if we're the only city in North Dakota that's done that, but my argument was We've got enough revenue and to spare. Why are we taxing our citizens yeah. on their property when we don't need the revenue? Yep. So we eliminated it. And uh, it's a good hedge against the county because those prices keep going up. I talked to a friend over um, Cass, Cass County yesterday. Her husband's um, eligible to retire next month. Mm -hmm. You know why they can't retire? Because they won't be able to afford their property taxes because they keep increasing. They were told that they can expect five to 10% property tax increases for the foreseeable future. Right. He can't retire because of that? Right. Unacceptable. Agreed. Very much so. One of the things that I was gonna bring up is how it's interesting. ARPA, the American Recovery Plan Act, that uh, North Dakota got $3.2 billion because it, it didn't just come to the state as the 1.2, it came to cities, townships, yep. counties, blah, blah, blah. And, that, and we also got CARES Act money, the state did, and the locals, right? And we also had at least the first half of Operation Prairie Dog, where the state gave a bunch of money to the cities yep. and counties. Mm -hmm. And we had property tax buy-down, which is a huge failure. Yep. Uh, but allegedly, if you listen to the legislators, uh, the, if we hadn't done that, property taxes would be so much higher. But there are hundreds of millions of dollars that the state bought down property mm -hmm. taxes. So it makes me wonder, why is it that property taxes are rising? Why do they need to keep, they, they'll increase no matter what, no matter how much they get in funding, they will find a reason to increase property taxes. It's maddening. And then the problem is we get into this finger pointing game. You go to a state legislator, oh, yes. they point to the local guys. Right. You go to the local guys, they point to, to the state guys. Mm -hmm. So you get into this situation where the public who doesn't know any different, to be mm -hmm. honest with you, a lot of people um, doesn't know what to do. Where do you go? Where do, who do you go to for the relief? 
Um, it's just unacceptable. I know uh, I have a friend who's on a city council and I'm not going to drop his name or anything, but he expressed his frustration with their rising uh, property values. And um, it was the state that came in and told them, you have to raise them or basically we'll do it for you. You know, so, mm. you, you know, you've got the, mm. it's, it's, and mm. I, I don't think that the state equalization board. Mm -hmm. eesh, now there's an incentive you know? to raise them so that you get your maximum money when it right. comes to per pupil spending by the state. Yep. Maybe okay. that's the but incentive. But, uh, right. It's still, so, so get a bigger pair of cojones yep. and do the, still do the right thing. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Right. Yep. hundred percent. Yeah. It's a, it's a troubling, I don't like it when all of a sudden you get notice that says, uh, we need to come inside your house. I'm like, no, you don't. <laughs> you are so not coming inside my house to do an assessment. No, thank you. And that's just, it, it's, that is intrusion and none your business. The other so, thing that's interesting yeah. is my dad remembers when the personal property tax was abolished. Yes. And he said all the same arguments against eliminating that were there that we see today with our eliminating property tax. And he said, the sky didn't fall. Everything was OK after mm -hmm. it went away. It'll be fine after property tax goes yep. away, too. Wise words. And now that the personal property tax has been gone for decades, mm -hmm. it's interesting to use that as a, as a frame of reference, because people now would say, my gosh, no. You're going to tax my boat, or you're going to tax yep. my nice leather coat Yep. Mm -hmm. every year Every year for me to be able to keep it? Yep. That, that's insane. Yep. It's the same thing yep. with, pro with real estate. Yeah. Let's switch gears a little bit and talk about District 2. Yeah. How have things changed over the years? Now, you've been there uh, as the chair since 2017. Yeah, 2017 is when I was elected. I won by one vote. Oh, oh. oh my. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, over one of your colleagues, uh, Representative Bert Anderson from Crosby, wonderful man. I, I absolutely love Bert. He's, he's genuinely a good man. Um, but I challenged him. Uh, for the chairmanship and won by a vote and um, then in 2019 I ran unopposed mm. and then this last time kind of fell victim to what was going on around the state with all of the reorgs and the hoopla and craziness with that of people suddenly feeling threatened by the conservatives taking over the party <laughs> uh, by the way uh, people should be really thinking about that uh, if you're concerned about conservatives taking over the Republican Party doesn't that say we have a problem in the party <laughs> yes, just saying but um, that was the concern and mm -hmm. and I had always had a good relationship with our legislators and then I was caught off guard when I found out I was going to be challenged ah. and so I went to work and uh, put together a group of people to start building a coalition uh, that could come and support me and and win re-election and uh, so I did. I won 246 to 33 against Bert again. Bert challenged me and uh, won re-election. So you see in the numbers, <clears throat> things have really changed in yes. District 2 politics because we, with the observers, right? we had about 300 plus people wow. there. Prior to that, for a meeting of that nature, you would have had maybe 15 to 20, 25 people. So things are really changing, and we're getting this more activist mindset out in Western North Dakota than yeah. we've had before. Well, let's listen to what it sounded like when you were giving some of your speech at, sure. at District 2. Is it too far right to believe that we should significantly reduce the size and role of the government, in particular the federal government? Oh, and then one, I hope this resonates with the whole bunch of because it does with what about the idea of no, I'm talking no compromise on the Second Amendment? You see, ladies and gentlemen, shall not be infringed means something. It's And let our republicanism, so focused and so dedicated, not be made fuzzy and futile by unthinking and stupid labels. I would remind you that 
extremism in the defense of liberty is no vice. And let me remind you also that moderation in the pursuit of justice is no virtue. With that, you know who I am. Cast your ballot accordingly, and I would welcome your vote to continue representing you as chair of district. Thank you for your patience. I, I appreciate that. I know that took a little while. We do have the results from the district chair's race. Uh, with 246 votes, I will continue as your district chair. You know it's good when somebody's back there going like this in the crowd. That was fantastic. You know what's Wonderful. interesting, Justin, is um, there were a lot of uh, districts in which there were, we'll say, the, the, the establishmentarians or the, the, the people that aren't the quote-unquote conservatives. And they were challenged by a group of grassroots people that came in and wanted to try and take over the district to bring it uh, to become more conservative. Mm -hmm. uh, but th those people were labeled and chastised and they, they didn't they weren't the real republicans they didn't belong in the party they were just trying to take over they weren't the, it's all sorts of things right but we have a situation here where in your district conservatives were in charge in your district the people who are more moderate yep. came in to challenge but i don't i didn't hear you calling them names no absolutely. and that the reason is because that's the nature of how this game is played you're in your position and you should expect to be challenged and you stand f up for what you believe in yep. and let the chips fall where they may. There's no crybabies with us conservatives. Right. I wish I could say the same thing for the moderates. Absolutely. And you know, the interesting thing about this situation too was that um, once we got going and organizing, we looked around the state and saw these other situations in some of those instances you're talking about where they started shutting conservative observers out of those reorg meetings and calling cops and having people kicked out and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. um, I think that even occurred here in Bismarck. And we had a police officer come over and I told him, I specifically said, everyone here is welcome. As long as everything's okay and we're not causing problems, anybody here can be here. I have no problem with anyone being here. The ballot boxes were all put out in the front. I wanted transparency from beginning to end. I wanted absolute respect, mm -hmm. regardless of what the outcome was going to be. And I felt that we represented District 2 well and the Republican Party well by how we handled it in District 2. Yep. I, I believe you did. It was an example set for everyone. Yep. Yeah. Watch and learn. All right, Justin, thanks so much <laughs> thanks for being so much. with us. Thank uh, you. I appreciate being here. It was a lot of fun. Time here. flies, man. It does. Time flies.